Okay, we are starting. Well, uh, welcome again. Uh, my name is uh, Andrew Rajcevic. I am representing the National Energy Conservation Agency uh, from Poland. Uh, we are a member of, of the uh, team uh, of uh, uh, four uh, entities, uh, which is uh, led by the Buildings for the Future from uh, Slovakia. Uh, with participation of uh, Chances for Building from Czech Republic and uh, uh, with the, the Hungarian Institute of Energy Efficiency, which is cooperating with, uh, uh, with uh, our colleagues from Energia Club uh, in, in Hungary. And the, the aim of, of the, the, this, this webinar is simply to present different aspects of uh, 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 speeding up the renovation wave in Poland in a new uh, situation, uh, which is caused by the uh, war uh, between uh, Russia and, and uh, Ukraine. Uh, well, uh, we are, uh, our meeting is uh, supported by the Visegrad Fund, uh, which, uh, which is uh, our uh, financing uh, 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 partner of, not only for this project, but for different uh, projects which uh, our consortium is implementing in this part uh, of, of Europe. Uh, I'm uh, also very happy uh, to have on board uh, Mrs. Justyna Glusman uh, from Fala Renovacji in Poland. Uh, this is the Polish renovation wave, the new association uh, registered a few weeks ago. Uh, which has the similar aims to uh, to the buildings for the future and the chances for building from Slovakia and, and uh, Czech Republic. And uh, we already have a uh, few common experience in, in Poland uh, related to financing of energy efficiency. And uh, we, we managed uh, uh, to gather the uh, round tables uh, of, uh, for financing of energy efficiency, one of them on the national level uh, three weeks ago and a week ago, uh, the, the round table in the largest Polish region, Mazovia. And there are, in fact, three important points that, that we gained, I think, uh, from these meetings. We participated over 200 experts financing uh, uh, per persons, uh, municipalities, uh, energy advisors, uh, etc. The first one uh, point is that, in fact, uh, there is no lack of money uh, to, to support energy efficiency. Uh, um, uh, in opposite, these, uh, these sources are uh, even larger uh, because of the uh, renew. Uh, 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 Repower EU uh, program, which will be mentioned by, by Bogdan Atanasiu. But the second point is that uh, it's uh, uh, really uh, very challenging how to uh, transfer these uh, resources to the owners of buildings uh, on each uh, type of, of, the, uh, of the ownership, uh, single family, multi-family, small and medium enterprises, municipal, uh, buildings. Uh, so uh, we need to, to uh, uh, intensify this uh, uh, thinking how to how to bring this money closer to the owners of our buildings. And my my <clears throat> statement uh, is uh, that we need uh, simply to knock each entrance door uh, of, of the building of the of the dwelling uh, of the municipal building and uh, share with the owner of the building uh, all these uh, opportunities which, uh, which are currently available on the market. At that point, very, very interesting, uh, which uh, uh, was uh, presented uh, during the regional roundtable in Mazovia uh, region is a so-called behavioral energy efficiency. So there's a, a very nice experience that has been shown uh, based on the City Lab project financed by Climate Kids, uh, experiment uh, which uh, shows that in the households, in, in uh, dwelling houses, it is uh, possible to reduce the uh, electricity consumption by at least 
15%, but ma maximally 30%, uh, 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 because of change of behavior in uh, use of uh, electricity consumption in, in households. Uh, this needs also uh, uh, special attention, I think, for our future uh, uh, discussions, uh, as this uh, uh, involvement of, of uh, final energy consumers is, uh, is a must if we would like to uh, achieve the uh, very uh, ambitious uh, goals of uh, uh, European Union. From my side, that's all for, for beginning, Justyna, please. Thank you, uh, Andre. Thank you, everyone. Uh, good morning. Uh, it's a pleasure to join this seminar. Uh, thank you for this opportunity for Fala Renovazzi Renovation Wave Poland, which is indeed a very fresh organization on the market, um, but very ambitious one as well. Um, not to prolong this introduction, uh, I would just like to mention I have just uh, returned from the um, international conference uh, organized by the International Energy Agency, um, Danish government and Danfoss devoted to energy uh, efficiency. And it seems that uh, the message uh, is universal and uh, very clear to decision makers, to politicians, to business. And it's our task as well to make it clear for the citizens, I believe, that the solutions, the technical solutions to uh, improve energy efficiency uh, are here uh, in all sectors. So we don't need to wait, we need action because uh, the greenest energy is the one that uh, we don't actually use. Um, and as the Danish climate minister uh, repeated uh, on many occasions uh, during this event, uh, we have a win-win and win situation when we gain the uh, through improving energy efficiency, the high level uh, of energy security, we save the climate and we also make or, or uh, make money, actually save uh, money. So there is uh, no reason to wait. Uh, we need to improve our support schemes uh, to unleash this uh, renovation wave. And we're working together with all organizations here in this uh, workshop towards this goal. I will have a pleasure to uh, present recommendations for the Polish government together with Aneta Stefańczyk from the Reform Institute, which prepared a report uh, summarizing experiences of other countries and we are presenting the lessons we can draw uh, and apply in the Polish uh, scene. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Justyna. Uh... Well, let me inform you that we have uh, now 35 participants uh, of, of our webinar, and uh, we uh, should record the, our, our webinar. This is information for, for everybody. So please uh, consider this, that this uh, webinar will be, uh, will be recorded. Uh, so let's start our presentations, which are planned for, for today's uh, meeting. The first one is, uh, F, uh, from Bogdan Atanasiu, uh, who is working in DG Energy, and is uh, very well understanding the situation in the in the uh, Eastern Europe uh, uh, part of uh, <laughs> European Union. Uh, so, uh, Bogdan, please uh, tell us uh, what's new for buildings in the EU energy policies and strategies, so that uh, we could apply this uh, in in our practice. The floor is yours, Bob. Thank you, Andre. Good morning, good morning, everyone. And uh, uh, before starting, I'd like to thank again for this kind invitation to participate at this event. So uh, first of all, I would uh, like to know from you if you can hear me well. Uh, and secondly, if the screen is visible uh, on the other side. Uh, yes, it's visible. Okay, no black boxes as uh, the rehearsal. So that's good. So uh, I'm happy to be here. So I will try to provide a very brief update of uh, the uh, things uh, happening at the DG Energy European Commission level, uh, the uh, policies related to buildings and mainly uh, my focus will be on the EPBD recast proposal 
which uh, was uh, announced in December last year and the uh, new uh, changes uh, induced by the uh, attack of uh, uh, Russia in Ukraine and the repower EU uh, plan that the Commission took it uh, in order to, to cope with this new challenge. So I think everyone is aware about uh, the Green Deal, so there's no need to, to make a deeper introduction. I would only insist on the 2020 climate target, target plan shaping the uh, way towards 50%, uh, 55% reduction of the GHG emissions in 2030. And uh, also on the building side, specifically on the renovation waste strategy, uh, showing, uh, indicating the way to, to develop on the building's policies to reach the 2030 goals of the European Union. Uh, as you uh, are all aware, last year uh, we had a big uh, package called Fit to 55 or uh, Delivering the European Green Deal. So it was a big package of uh, new proposals for many legislations uh, covering various fields. But uh, notably in December, as I mentioned, we launched a proposal for the recast of the energy performance of buildings directive. And uh, this proposal, it's very much connected to, to other uh, initiatives, other proposals like the energy efficiency directive proposals, the uh, renewable energy directive proposal, the effort sharing uh, regulation uh, proposal, the emission trading extension to road and buildings and the uh, associated social climate fund, and uh, also the alternative fuel infrastructure regulation. We all uh, uh, know and are very aware about the fact that buildings are the key sector in uh, reaching decarbonization, but also not only uh, decarbonization, but also reaching a sustainable energy sector and uh, uh, increasing the security of supply by, uh, by acting at the demand side. And uh, I would like only to recall the fact that uh, the building sector altogether are responsible of about 40% of the energy consumption, about 36 of, uh, 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 percent of the total energy related uh, GHG emissions in the EU. That means direct and indirect uh, emissions. We uh, uh, have a very slow rate of renovation of energy related renovation of buildings. Citizens, as we can see nowadays, are very exposed to the high energy prices and energy prices volatility, generally speaking. And uh, many citizens in the EU are still struggling to keep their homes uh, sufficiently adequately warm. So uh, uh, living in energy poverty, so there are many things to, to do with the buildings. And uh, uh, last but not the least, the buildings are the most important part probably of our lives. We are living in buildings, going back home or here at the office. And at the economic level, it's uh, no regret investment in improving the energy performance of our buildings because it creates jobs, it creates economic activities we also reach a reduction of the energy demand and emissions and improve overall the quality of life of the citizens. So uh, we should do it. Moving to the uh, EPBD recast proposal, I would like to present you in a few slides the main uh, uh, things, the main novelties uh, that the directive uh, proposed. Uh, first of all, the directive is uh, backed up by the climate target plan that identify that by 2030, the EU should reduce the building's GHG emissions, direct emissions by 60%, their final energy consumption by 14%, and specifically the energy consumption for heating and cooling by 18%. And in the renovation wave strategy, it was uh, identified that we should aim to double the renovation rate by 2030 and to foster the deep renovation simultaneously. Uh, the uh, average uh, identify energy related renovation rate in 2020 was about uh, 1% a year of uh, the building stock. So we should reach consequently about 2%, if not more, in order to stay on the decarbonization pathway. The EPBD RICAS proposal. Uh, uh, has twofold, uh, twofold objective. One is to uh, contribute to reduce the building GHG emissions as uh, uh, the climate target plan identify it should be and uh, also the final energy consumption. 
and uh, secondly to to provide a longer term vision for buildings uh, and uh, to put them on the pathway to climate neutrality by 2050 you can see at the below uh, at the bottom of uh, of the slide uh, graph so this is uh, uh, presenting three GHG emissions uh, uh, lines the first one is business as usual the red one is uh, what could be uh, the emissions in 2030 if the EPBD recast proposal is not coming into the picture. And the bottom one is the uh, cumulated EPBD and the fit to 55 uh, package effect on reducing GHG emissions by 2030 and staying in line with what the climate target plan uh, indicated it should be. Trying to aggregate uh, the main uh, points of the EPBD recast proposal in uh, four big uh, categories. Uh, uh, I will start with the renovation, so the component addressing the existing buildings. And the uh, uh, proposal is coming with a new national building renovation plan that the member states should prepare. This, uh, in this is intended to be a continuation of the long-term renovation strategy that is uh, currently in the EPBD uh, uh, and the, the member states should, uh, should prepare. Uh, we also introduced the minimum energy performance standards for renovating the building. That means the worst performing buildings uh, will have to be renovated to reach an upper energy class level. And I will detail uh, all the points a bit later. Uh, it is uh, also a, a new proposal for the energy performance certificates to align more across the Europe and to adjust a bit the scale uh, across the EU countries. Uh, last but not the least, it is a proposal for uh, the member states to introduce voluntary renovation passport for uh, individual buildings in order to allow step-by-step uh, -step renovation and uh, try to overcome some market barriers we, we identify. In terms of decarbonization, the directive proposal is coming with a new concept. After nearly zero energy buildings, we uh, now propose uh, zero emission buildings as a new standard for new buildings. And also through the National Building Renovation Plan, a new uh, zero emission building become a 2050 vision for a building stock overall. Uh, in terms of decarbonization, also for the new buildings, we introduce a new requirement to, to cons consider the whole life cycle carbon. So not only uh, the direct operational uh, li uh, emissions of a building, but also the lifetime ones in the other phases of the building. And uh, last but not the least, uh, the phasing out of incentives for fossil fuels and the uh, new legal basis for the national bonds of fossil fuels in buildings introduces, I will present later in certain articles of the proposal. In terms of modernization and system integration, the proposal, EPBD proposal is coming with a, a stricter requirement for uh, the e-mobility infrastructure. Uh, also additional requirement for the energy performance certificates, uh, digitization and generally buildings databases uh, uh, and uh, interconnectivity, interoperationality of these databases and access. Uh, smart readiness indicator, it's, uh, it's upscaled compared to the current EPBD. And in terms of financing, uh, the proposal is coming with new uh, 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 new uh, uh, lines and support for uh, stimulating the public and private financing and technical assistance to is proposing a new deep renovation standards as a golden standard for uh, for uh, deep renovation and uh, last but not the least uh, has uh, provision uh, in order to prioritize and uh, protect the vulnerable households and people affected by energy poverty in terms of new buildings, as I said, the, the proposal is coming with the uh, nearly uh, from nearly zero in energy buildings is moving to zero emission buildings, and in uh, uh, these are defined as buildings having a very high energy performance and uh, uh, the all uh, remaining energy needs to be covered fully by renewable energy from uh, generated on site uh, from the renewable energy communities or from uh, renewable district heating. 
uh, in the Annex 3 of the proposal, uh, the concept of uh, zero emission buildings is further developed and there are provisions for the total uh, primary energy use. There are minimum energy requirements developed by climatic zones. Uh, there are details, uh, detailed uh, type of renewable sources uh, uh, allowed to, to, to supply the zero emission building, uh, and I just mentioned them. And uh, also very important, uh, it is mentioned that the zero emission building should have zero on-site GHG emissions generated from fossil fuels. And uh, of course, as I said, uh, through the buildings renovation plan, zero emission building uh, become the level to be attained by a deep renovation as of uh, 2030 and the uh, vision for the building stock in 2050. Also for zero emission buildings, uh, the life cycle global warming potential uh, uh, will have to be calculated uh, as of uh, 2030. And uh, this should be done in accordance with the levels framework and uh, some existing uh, standards or others to be further developed. And there are uh, uh, strengthening uh, the requirements for recharging of uh, e-vehicles for uh, having uh, uh, charging points in the buildings or for having pre-cabling uh, for, uh, for new buildings or buildings undertaking renovation. I will present uh, later that but also mandatory parking for alternative uh, mobility for bicycle uh, in, uh, in the new buildings. The zero emission building uh, uh, should be introduced in 2027 uh, as for the public buildings and 2030 for uh, all, uh, all other buildings. The main provisions of the APBD proposal for existing buildings are, as I mentioned briefly before, the minimum energy performance standards. And uh, we have in the Article 9, uh, dealing with that, uh, some uh, requirements that all the public uh, and non-residential buildings uh, should, uh, in G-class, should uh, be lifted by one class by 2027 and uh, should reach uh, a E-class uh, by 2030. Uh, for residential building, it's a delay of three years. So all G-class residential buildings should uh, be lifted by renovation at at least uh, F class by 2030 and D class by 2033. And uh, um, the member states will have to, to set up uh, additionally in the through the building renovation plan, they have to prepare for further improvement of their building stock in the, uh, in the, future, uh, uh, in the future years. Uh, also, another uh, important uh, uh, new provision is in the directive is uh, are the national building renovation plan. So the member states should move from strategic thinking from the long term renovation strategies to the planning of renovation. This is the message uh, we intended to send. And uh, also, in order to simplify the reporting, only the first plan will, uh, will have to come uh, uh, as such to, to be reported as such to the Commission and the uh, progress reporting and the next uh, uh, plans uh, to come uh, uh, in time uh, will be integrated in the national energy and climate uh, uh, plans uh, process in the integrated reporting uh, for, for these plans. Uh, we also propose through the EPBD proposal some common templates for the national building renovation plan. So the member states will have to report on certain key mandatory indicators. There are also additional voluntary indicators, but uh, accompanying those uh, uh, and uh, that uh, can be reported. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, through the proposal, we introduced deep renovation as a golden standard for renovation. So that means uh, deep renovation is defined as a, a renovation at nearly zero energy buildings level by 2030 and at zero emission level afterwards. Uh, building renovation passport, uh, it is another tool introduced uh, through the EPBD proposal and we believe that this will uh, uh, deal uh, very well with the uh, uh, barrier of uh, upfront, high upfront cap uh, capital investment necessary by a deep renovation because the building renovation passport should be uh, uh, introduced uh, a planning uh, for the individual buildings renovation in steps 
should be based on uh, an audit or on uh, an expert uh, uh, preparation uh, at the initial stage uh, that we identify the most appropriate step to renovate the buildings towards deep renovation zero emission level and uh, at the same time should be accompanied uh, by uh, different uh, indications and support uh, uh, for uh, financing for how to deal it and how to better implement uh, uh, the renovation process in uh, in a given period of time uh, these uh, requirements uh, should be introduced by the member states as a voluntary scheme as from 2024 Another interesting uh, uh, proposal uh, coming uh, uh, through EPBD is uh, the uh, improvement of the requirements for recharging of e vehicles in buildings. And uh, this uh, for existing buildings uh, uh, is uh, in case of major renovation when the, the building should uh, have at least uh, uh, one recharging point at every five parking places and to have uh, pre-cabling for the others. It is uh, uh, the APVD proposal, it's also coming with a strong proposal for uh, uh, removal of the obstacles and barriers uh, to renovation. So uh, it's asking the member states to improve the regulatory framework in order to, to uh, trigger renovation and to remove the barriers in, uh, in uh, certain cases, uh, for instance, uh, co-property, in order to, to leave people to, to renovate, to simplify the procedures around this. Last but not the least, uh, I mentioned briefly at the beginning, the member states uh, must not subsidize the fossil fuel, fuel boilers uh, as of uh, 2027. This is uh, a quite important requirement and uh, this uh, is uh, also aligned to the pathway to 2050 because uh, if uh, uh, the phasing out of the fossil fuels uh, uh, in buildings is not starting within the next uh, 10 years as it was identified later, uh, it will be uh, more challenging or rather impossible to, to stay on, uh, on the decarbonization pathway. There are also other... Uh, uh, yeah, Bogdan, uh, sorry uh, yes. for interruption, you have still Eight, eight slides, but we are running a little bit out of time. Could you please? Okay, so maybe try to I, can, uh, I can. I uh, can. Many things. So maybe I should hurry up. I was saying that it's good to to be slow in speaking, but I can be very fast. So there are also other sets of uh, provisions for information tools, new metrics, inspection. So, for instance, the greenhouse gases emissions become part of the EPBD metrics which is quite important for the energy performance certificates. As I mentioned initially, it will be a certain readjustment in order to fix uh, the A class to the zero emission uh, buildings level, to have the G class uh, concentrating the worst performing 15% of building stocks and the other to be distributed uh, with an even bandwidth. Uh, there are additional uh, refinements on inspections of uh, heating and cooling system. Uh, smart uh, readiness indicators will be required uh, for large non-residential buildings from 2026 onwards. And as I mentioned, some other provisions related to access to buildings data, databases, uh, and so on. So now moving uh, to the current situation. So as everyone is uh, it's aware, the commission came on 18 of May with the Repower EU plan and uh, also with some additional documents around. So it was a package uh, uh, comprised uh, in that uh, communication. And the Repower EU plan uh, has mainly uh, three fold uh, targets. So to save energy, to produce clean energy and to diversify energy supply in order to get rid of the natural gas and generally fossil fuel imports from Russia. So uh, as I mentioned, it was a package. So uh, uh, on top of the Repower EU communication, we have a EU safe energy communication and uh, also a very important few amendments to the uh, proposals for renewable energy, energy performance of buildings directive and energy efficiency directive. There are other uh, things around, but I will not insist on them. So just trying to have a highlight of uh, this package. So I will start first with the proposed amendment to the EPBD proposal. So it is about the uh, introduction, compulsory introduction of the solar energy uh, generation consideration from the design stage uh, in uh, uh, for new buildings. 
And also the member states uh, should uh, ensure the deployment of solar energy installation in new and existing public and commercial buildings by the end of 2026 and 2027 respectively, and in all new residential buildings by the end of 2029. At the same time, in the Repower EU uh, plan uh, is, uh, in the EU Save uh, Energy Plan of City to Repower EU is uh, uh, announced uh, uh, increase of the 2030 energy efficiency targets from 9% to 13% as reported to 2020 uh, targets. And there are two sets of measures, the short-term measures addressing buildings, short-term measures, that refers to heating in houses and services as a key sector to reduce the demand for natural gas, particularly and generally for fossil fuels. And uh, these shorter measures are about uh, under mentioned beginning voluntary behavioral changes of citizens. And uh, in this way, we can save with no cost or very little cost uh, as it was estimated up to 10 BCM billion uh, cubic meters of natural gas. Few examples of this kind of uh, uh, short-term measures are, uh, I know, the draft proofing of homes uh, to, to avoid the uh, heat uh, leakage through cracks or other imperfections that can be easily fixed, sealing around the windows. Uh, also to lower the heat, uh, uh, heating circuit temperature below 60 degrees to turn down heating or set up down the thermostat over the winter or a bit upper over, over the summertime warm season. And also to, to make more efficient the use of energy in the building. So by turning off, uh, for instance, the heating in some unused space. On the medium and long term is nothing new. Energy efficiency measures and uh, 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 stronger uh, deployment of feed pumps in the EU may save up to 37 BCM of natural gas by 3030, which is a lot. Uh, as main measures proposed by the Repower EU plan are the double the deployment rate of the heat pumps on this term to 10 million units and uh, uh, to happen uh, likely within the following five years. And uh, it, in the EU safe plan, it is also uh, proposed that uh, in the ongoing co-decision process uh, uh, for the proposals of uh, EPBD, EED, and RED to uh, potentially enhance the minimum energy performance standards by uh, widening the scope for more perform performing buildings to other buildings or to make more ambitious the target to renovate them, not to E-class as I presented by to D-class, uh, to phase out the member states uh, subsidies for fossil fuel boilers. So uh, it is a, a proposal to anticipate it from 2027 as it is now in the EPBD proposal 2025 to strengthen uh, the national uh, energy and the wider resource efficiency requirements for new buildings. Uh, for instance, through earlier introduction of zero emission buildings requirement or to uh, upscale the requirements for uh, heating systems in buildings. And uh, also to tighten the national heating system requirements for existing buildings uh, and 2029 to be the date, uh, uh, the final date for standalone fossil fuel boilers on the market. There are also some uh, uh, in the Repower EU, some accompanying measures uh, encouraging uh, uh, or proposals to encourage the member states to use the fiscal measures for energy savings, by example, uh, by reducing the VAT for energy efficiency heating systems, building insulation appliances and products. Sorry for being long. I think I reach an end in 11 minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was uh, very, very important. Uh, information uh, for us. We are a little bit uh, out of time, but I think that we can uh, reduce a little bit the next speeches. So, Justina, please introduce the next speaker. Mm, hello. So, I, I give a floor to Aneta Stefanczyk from the Reform Institute, and Aneta will start uh, telling about our report that the uh, Institute actually. Um, has delivered and I will then present uh, recommendations. I try to make it fast. Aneta.
Hello. Uh, thank you for uh, for introduction. And um, welcome to our presentation when, in which we will discuss policy tools um, to support building renovation in Poland and in other European countries. As Justyna mentioned, uh, this presentation uh, is the result of um, uh, uh, is the summary of, uh, in a way, of our report that we uh, have written, uh, in which we attempted to, um, in which we attempted to um, to determine what would be the best way to um, to reform the Polish system of uh, supporting the renovations. Um, in this report, we used the following methodology. First, we um, identified what are the reasons for public intervention in the building renovation sector. Then we um, then we discussed the objectives of this intervention, and uh, with uh, this knowledge, we could see how the policy tools that are available in Poland now are uh, in which respect uh, they are uh, fulfilling this uh, um, targets and in which they are lacking. Uh, so having um, having realized what are the key areas of improvement uh, in terms of a uh, Polish support system, we could review the experiences from other European countries and find what solutions other European nations came up with to similar problems. And that uh, led us to the set of recommendations, which will be presented later by Justyna. Uh, so, uh, thankfully, um, some parts of my presentations were already discussed by Bogdan, so I can make my presentation a little bit shorter. But when it comes to the reasons for public intervention in the renovation, uh, in the building renovations, uh, this follows from the uh, climate, uh, new climate targets of the European Union and the uh, scope of emissions and energy use in the building sector. Putting these two together, which were already presented by Bogdan, um, means that uh, in order for the whole block to achieve the targets, uh, the targeted reduction in the greenhouse gas emissions, uh, the uh, rate of renovation uh, renovations has to double uh, at least double and uh, also the share of deep renovations which combine the intervention in the uh, building uh, envelope and also the replacement of the heat source uh, needs needs to increase sharply other reason for the uh, for the inter public intervention in the uh, building renovation sector is uh, that uh, is the um, energy crisis, which is the result of the aggression of Russia on Ukraine. And uh, as we can see from the chart here, the uh, increased effort in implementation of P455 uh, combined with Repower EU can help us to uh, um, reduce the gas consumption in the building sector uh, by the by the amount that is equal to the two thirds of the current current Imports, imports of gas from Russia. So um, the building sector can be crucial in uh, uh, delivering the Repower EU strategy. Um, but in order to, um, to realize the strategic targets, um, the building renovations have to follow more specific ones, which are um, contained within European and national uh, legislation. Uh, the Fit for 55 requirements were already uh, covered, so I will skip this part. Uh, but we also have the uh, national so source of law with regard to uh, building renovations. And uh, the, this is the long term renovation strategy for Poland. Um, it follows similar logic to Fit for 55 as it also um, advises to increase and increase uh, the scale of modernizations uh, and increase the depth of the realized modernizations so that the deep renovation rate reaches 3% per year in the long term. Um, it also um, assumes that the uh, focus first will be on the least efficient buildings 
uh, so that uh, we can get rid of the uh, biggest uh, extent of the energy waste as soon as it is possible. Um, th that brings us to uncovering some key areas that uh, um, help us assess the Polish uh, policy tools. So uh, the, uh, the policy tools should be able to uh, provide the sufficient scale of innovations, their complexity and depth, um, should address the least efficient buildings, and they also should be widely, widely recognized and should help educate about the energy efficiency. Um, if we put the, uh, these programs that we have now already in place, so clean air program, stop smoke and uh, tax relief uh, uh, for thermal modernization of buildings. Uh, if we contrast them with these uh, criteria, we can see that we are only able to provide the uh, proper scale of renovations in some cases. Uh, if the tendencies that we have now are being um, um, are uh, stable in the uh, in the following decades but the rest of the criteria is not met. And uh, with these gaps in our support system in mind, we uh, researched other policy tools offered by uh, another European, other European countries. Um, and what, uh, what was, uh, we had two areas of analysis in our, uh, in our, um, in our, uh, report, which was residential buildings and the public buildings. Uh, in the public, uh, in the residential buildings, we uh, looked into how other countries build their subsidy-based support tools, and um, the most striking differences and good practices from uh, uh, from other countries was were that. Um, they put a lot of stress on energy audit and strategic planning of uh, uh, renovations for a, a uh, for a certain building. Uh, they also made uh, the level of support dependent on the energy standard achieved by the building. So uh, it motivates to uh, the building owners to aim more ambitiously for, for more ambitious uh, increase in energy efficiency. Uh, and also very important difference was the, just the very le level of, uh, um, of uh, unitary support offered. So uh, as we can see here, it is not only the difference uh, in the nominal amount of uh, money offered per building, but also when we contrast it with the uh, with the uh, income differences, uh, it is still uh, this disparity is still um, quite uh, visible. Mm. Uh, we also researched the tax reliefs, uh, which uh, in which case we decided to focus on the German tax relief and the super eco bonus from Italy. Uh, from uh, from this analysis, it followed that the most important good practice was uh, the uh, ability for the beneficiary to uh, sub uh, uh, subtract the uh, support level from the tax amount and not from the tax base, uh, which makes the whole uh, the whole tool more uh, transparent uh, for the investor. Um, and also, we had here higher uh, maximum support levels. Uh, this is similar to the subsidy based systems that we saw on the previous slide. Um, in terms of reaching the, um, uh, the lowest uh, income households, um, there are many good practices listed here, but we can see that the most important ones were um, um, minimal, minimization of the formal requirements, requirements for the beneficiary. So practically, the um, state takes over the management of the whole uh, investment in some cases. Um, there is also a great 
um, great example in the UK or France of how different agents from different backgrounds can uh, cooperate in order to deliver this change where the uh, uh, for the most uh, for the lowest income household so um, it's either involvement of energy companies or uh, local authorities and uh, local firms from the building sector um, helping to bring about the change for the lowest income households. Uh, and uh, as uh, for the promotion and education, the best way that we found for uh, in other European countries to uh, increase the awareness of, uh, of the benefits of uh, uh, energy modernization of buildings was the one-stop shops. And uh, um, the slide here show, uh, shows you that uh, there are uh, these one-stop shops are not a uniform concept. Uh, they, it differs from country to country. Um, so uh, in Poland now we just have the initiative phase of a uh, network of energy consultants who just deliver information, but it is not really a one-stop shop. Um, this can be increased uh, by um, allowing for more coordination and uh, more realization uh, uh, phases uh, into the uh, uh, into the scope of uh, activities of the one-stop shop, and also this re requires of an uh, higher invo uh, involvement of uh, private sector uh, in the uh, in the process of uh, building renovations. Um, so uh, moving on to the public buildings. Uh, the key good practices here were, um, uh, were for example, the fact that we even have the uh, support tools that are standard and nationalized. But it is, uh, uh, but but what uh, what was the most uh, uh, often stressed was that uh, um, that these tools. Um, put the energy diagnosis and energy audit first. So this is very important for the public buildings where there is more, um, more state um, involvement in the, uh, in the quality of these renovations. Um, and it's also uh, as, in the, as in the residential buildings, we have higher uh, higher support offered for these renovations, which provide uh, bigger gains in terms of energy efficiency. Yeah, Aneta, uh, can we? <laughs> this is the last slide, and okay, then I uh, move on. Okay, so uh, in public buildings, uh, it is also important to uh, regard the digitalization as it can help bring about the change and uh, effi uh, and uh, energy efficiency gains, and. Um, the good practices here are um, uh, can be summarized as data collection requirements and IT tools. And uh, uh, as we can see on the slide, it is um, already implemented by a number of European countries. And with that, uh, I would like to uh, leave floor to uh, Justyna, who will uh, uh, present the recommendations. Thank you. Thank you, Aneta. I will try to be fast, as I know we are running out of time. Um, I think you need to... Uh, sorry, sorry. Did you stop sharing, Aneta? Yes, I did. Because I can still see your screen. Okay. Let's see, yeah. No? Oh, now it's better. Let's see. Okay. Can you see the full one? Yes. Okay. So welcome again. I will move on uh, from um, what uh, what Aneta has presented. 
and uh, basically present the conclusions for Poland that we can uh, also draw a lesson from uh, these um, cases. Oh, I cannot move, I don't know why. Ah, oh, yeah. So just this, to set the scene and, uh, and, to, in, and to show you the scale of the challenge, uh, we have 70% of buildings that is more than four and a half million uh, that are not effective in terms of uh, energy. Uh, two and a half of these uh, buildings, according to the long-term renovation strategy that Aneta mentioned, have to be renovated by 2030. And also uh, among these um, half a million of uh, deep retrofits have to be conducted. 16% of the buildings are in the worst conditions. And uh, according to Fit for 55, three percentage of uh, buildings annually should be uh, retrofitted. 40% uh, of uh, the energy in Polish buildings comes from the fossil fuels and the level of support, Aneta also mentioned it, is uh, much uh, lower, not only than in Germany, but also in neighboring countries like Czech Republic. And we are um, speaking about the uh, disposable income. So we looked at several cases, as we have seen, uh, the team has analyzed more or less 20 uh, case studies. Uh, and the interesting ones I would, have to, I would like to point out is, for instance, seven. 55,000 euros uh, subsidy for renovation of the single family buildings in uh, building in Germany. Uh, Eco bonus in Italy uh, that provides uh, more than 100, 110 um, percent of the cost of uh, retrofit. This program has also other goals, uh, the, the, the tax goals. Nevertheless, and 100 of Croatian public buildings is to come under the central system of energy information management by uh, 2030. So this is the goal also mentioned already um, for the public buildings, better data. And just to summarize the table you have seen already, um, as this is a kind of starting point for our recommendations, basically none of the programs available today in Poland, and there are three main ones, uh, with the largest um, uh, uh, cleaner and, uh, and retrofit tax relief, none of them promotes deep retrofit. So we are not, not uh, aiming into the goal of the uh, increasing amount, uh, number of uh, deep uh, complex renovations of buildings with these programs. They have started to achieve the scale, especially cleaner program after it's kind of bumpy beginning started to uh, to work, but this is mainly and predominantly the exchange of the uh, fuel boilers, coal fuel boilers. At the beginning, they were exchanged also for um, newer coal boilers. Now uh, this is phased, uh, phased out. But as you see, um, also none of the programs is reaching the worst buildings, which is especially worse in terms of technical condition, which is especially worrying in the uh, current situation of dramatic rise of the fuel prices, also uh, uh, coal. So it's clear that with these support programs, we are not reaching the goals of the European Union and we need to restructure our Polish programs. So uh, just to go through the main recommendations, first of all, we uh, propose to adapt the cleaner program that is the main program in Poland uh, to support deep and comprehensive retrofits by providing some benefits for the um, higher, higher energy standards, to link the support under the retrofit tax relief with the energy uh, effects uh, after renovation that is non-existent today. Um, we also propose to integrate Stop Smog. This is marginal program. It's not very popular as there are many internal barriers built in with the cleaner program by defining the um, role of the local governments and also uh, including to this program energy company similarly to the UK, um, we can draw lessons from their experience. Uh, to introduce energy class system as uh, that, that's another barrier that uh, we don't know actually, we don't have a simple transparent system to prove that building came from uh, one stage in terms of energy efficiency to another. And the complex, uh, comprehensive information, uh, one service point for the beneficiaries, 
and um, a, like a guidance for the for the um, building owner from the beginning of the process of renovation to its end and including the in, uh, financial assistance that's that's another renovation that uh, uh, recommendation that uh, we propose and to go a little bit into depth uh, we propose to um, divide these recommendations into two steps the first step uh, measures that are, can be implemented in a relatively short time. The second step includes more structural changes. So first of all, we propose to increase uh, the maximum subsidy level at least uh, twofold. Um, as uh, as it was as Aneta has shown that this is far far lower than 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 in other countries. And another. A measure is also to uh, a revision of the unit cost limits per square meter uh, of insulating the envelope uh, to take account much higher costs. Today, these um, these uh, benefits are really uh, not uh, relevant in terms of uh, the much higher prices. So, inflation-adjusted indexation of all cost units. That's another proposal. The automatic temperature control equipment to be installed in houses that also uh, benefit from the public money is something that can um, um, radically improve the energy efficiency. Withdrawal of support for gas sources. It's uh, it's another recommendation. At these first steps. Uh, we would uh, leave only the investments in uh, gas when um, accompanied by investments in energy uh, efficiency. Uh, differentiation of subsidies uh, for thermal insulation depending on the depth of uh, uh, modernization, uh, as in other countries like in Germany, and uh, abolition of income limits for, do for those uh, modernizations that lead to nearly zero emission, zero emission uh, standards. And in the second step, so uh, we propose more structural changes. Um, so indexation of the unit cost limits uh, and the total amount of subsidy that would be taking place annually, complete withdrawal from uh, supporting fossil fuels, uh, introduction of consistency with the EU sustainable financing uh, taxonomy, eligibility of multiple applications. Today, this is not possible but uh, with the passport for the buildings that would be possible and, and we would recommend that and also the um, linking the, the support uh, and intensity of support uh, with the energy efficiency class system and implementation of one-stop uh, shop projects um, uh, is another recommendation um, we would recommend in the long term to bring all the existing program under one umbrella that would simplify the system that would also be a clear message for the potential uh, beneficiaries. Um, when, when it comes to tax reliefs uh, of, for the energy effects of investments, uh, we would propose the single allowance of 35% of the tax due. This Aneta also mentioned it should be a tax and not a tax base base um, and the increase of the maximum eligible cost from 53,000 to at least 140,000. Implementation of requirements concerning the energy performance of investments, that's another recommendation and compulsory energy consultation before starting an investment so we know which kind of effects is likely to bring. Um, only clean fuel sources it's another uh, it's another recommendation also improvement improvement of at least by two uh, energy uh, classes of the buildings when it comes to the um, to the role of the self government it definitely requires um, uh, requires a redefinition and as i mentioned uh, the program should be integrated uh, in such a way that they sh there should be synergies, positive synergies from these programs working together uh, and, and not separate sources uh, of financing. So uh, we would also recommend the third parties to be able to uh, participate in cleaner program and uh, uh, both 
both programs should support uh, should support uh, various um, modernizations when the there should be a possibility to combine national sources with the subnational uh, self governmental money for instance for for co financing that would bring an effect in terms of increasing the scale of investment also today uh, barrier is the necessity to sign an agreement with each municipality uh, we would uh, recommend resigning from uh, from uh, that practice leaving the uh, voluntary uh, agreements are you finishing Christina? and uh, yes i am finishing i am but just I cannot move forward, I don't know why. Yes, so energy class system, I will not speak too much about that. We know what uh, um, what is it about, As, and I already mentioned, one-stop shops is extremely important issue because it's also the bottom-up uh, action at the first uh, phase we would recommend to uh, analyze all the practices that already been implemented in Poland at different level and then draw the lessons uh, consult with stakeholders and propose the pilot projects and then based on this experience to move to the national program. When it comes to pu public buildings, recommendations are a bit different. They concern um, data, the uh, methodology of gathering data about buildings, separate program for um, financing renovations of uh, public buildings also uh, higher uh, co-financing for buildings that have the higher emission standard and the database. Database is extremely important. So we have a database on emission sources and on the fuel um, types of, uh, of uh, uh, fuels if, 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 uh, in the buildings and this would be complemented with the uh, energy efficiency data of those buildings and good practice for the um for the buildings the historic buildings should be um, gathered under one umbrella in in one website that is another recommendations thank you thank you very much uh, justina we have uh, two presentations more the, uh, one from Slovakia, katrina nikodemova please start your presentation uh good morning also from slovakia I will also share my slides. So just a minute. I don't know why it's is quite slow but now it should work yeah do you see the the full screen yes <laughs> no the presentation not not the full screen okay because i'm sharing it full screen so maybe it will just take some time but you should it should work in a minute uh, well, in my presentation on behalf of the Buildings for the Future, uh, I will focus on presenting case study of single family houses in Slovakia. Uh, and uh, I will present this uh, mostly in the light of the, the recovery and resilient plan. Uh, it's the, the recover uh, package uh, is not reflected in the presentation because basically the sector uh, did not react so quickly on this. Uh, but I will try to present two main parts uh, or two main topics in my presentation. The first one is uh, basically a definition of the single family house sector in Slovakia and defining the, the potential of the sector. Why is it even important to, to focus on this sector in the public policies and in the recovery plan? And in the second part, I will present uh, basically a brand new and uh, still in a process support scheme that will be launched uh, probably next week in Slovakia. 
uh, that is being part of, of the recovery and resilient plan in Slovakia uh, with focus on single family houses. Uh, and I will try to uh, again maybe point out and uh, highlight some of our recommendations uh, that were taken on board in this support scheme that will be launched. Um, so first of all, what do we know about the sector as such and why is it important? Uh, thanks to data collection and census that was done by state statistical office uh, last year. Katarina, we don't see the slides changing even. We are still in a... see it. You know. And the slide does not change, yeah. Okay, but I don't know how to... And uh, I'd like to, to, to mention that uh, we need to well, reduce the, the question and uh, answers uh, uh, part. So please, if you have questions, uh, put them on the chat. We try to answer later on, or you can mail us because you will have uh, still uh, the next presentation of the Katarinas. Okay. Yes. Katarina, maybe you could close the presentation mode and just present it from the working mode because we still cannot see the full screen and we cannot see the slide changes. You still don't see the slide changes. We are running out of time, so I think it's easier if we just see it from the working mode. Okay, do you see it now? Yes. And the the slides change now? Yes. Okay, then I have to do it like this, I'm sorry. Uh, so about the sector, uh, we know this is a lot of numbers, but I will just pick out what is important. We know that the sector is quite big. There is around 1 million single family houses in Slovakia. Uh, and we also know that a majority of them are old, uh, 20 or even 40 years old. Uh, only 19% 19, 19 of single family houses were renovated in a complex way. Uh, more renovations were done in a way that at least one of the three key parts on the house were renovated, which is roof, facade or windows. Um, regarding the heating uh, or the, the source of the heating, uh, we know from the data that almost 70% of the single family houses has gas connection and actually more than 60% of the house are heated by gas. So this shows a big uh, dependence also in the sector of single family houses on, on gas because Slovakia really is very dependent on gas. So taking into account that we want to switch from gas to other sources, it's quite a challenge for the single family, family houses sector in Slovakia. Uh, and to sum it up, uh, we can say that the, the renovations that were done uh, were not done in a very professional way. It was done rather with low quality materials and not in a very professional way. Regarding funding, it was uh, mostly financed from own savings or from financial loans or commercial banks. So this, for example, compared to Czech Republic, which is uh, a very good uh, case to, uh, to present and to inspire, um, we can say uh, that uh, in Slovakia, the support scheme that was here before was not uh, very effective in helping people to finance the renovations. So hopefully with the new subsidy scheme, this will change. We also calculated that the potential for deep renovation is quite big uh, because we calculated it's around 390,000 single family houses that would need the, the renovation. Uh, moving to the second part on the recovery and resilient plan, as I said, uh, the government um, is preparing a new subsidy scheme for the single family houses in Slovakia. And it, uh, it is going to be launched probably next week. Uh, so uh, 
this was our policy paper that we uh, used when the recovery and resilient plan was being created uh, in Slovakia, uh, where we also offered several arguments why uh, the government should focus on single family houses sector and what benefits it can bring uh, if we support more single family houses renovation. Um, now, uh, how the subsidy scheme looks like uh, or what, what are the objectives that uh, will be defined uh, that are defined in the subsidy scheme. Uh, we know that there is allocation of around half a billion euro uh, and the government wants to renovate 30,000 uh, houses in Slovakia by the end of the recovery plan, which is 2026. Uh, there is also a reform uh, with which the government wants to harmonize the existing support schemes. We heard that already in the previous uh, presentations, and I see it's not a problem only of Slovakia, but in different countries, that we have different subsidy schemes for buildings, and it's uh, uh, managed by different authorities, which makes it at the end very complicated for the for the owners of the houses or of the buildings uh, to to renovate. So this is a very important point that uh, the new uh, the new subsidy scheme has also this reform that it will somehow harmonize the existing support schemes. And there is also quite a strong focus on technical and administrative assistance. So there will be some one-stop shops, some, some technical assistance, and it should be uh, managed by a fully automatic information system for the applicants. Um, also, uh, what, is, what is good news is that the new, new scheme aims for complex solutions. So the list uh, of all the measures that can be financed through the subsidy scheme is quite long and there are uh, quite some new and progressive measures that were not uh, financed or it was not so usual to get public, uh, public money on financing, for example, green roofs uh, until now, but with the new subsidy scheme, there is this opportunity to, to use money also for this. What we are also happy about is that uh, the subsidy scheme works with a motivation approach, um, basically counting uh, with the rule that uh, with the higher energy savings, the owner can get higher subsidy. So if someone uh, aims for 30 to 60 primary energy savings, the subsidy will be lower, but if someone will be very ambitious and we are, will aim for more than 60% of primary energy savings, uh, the owner will get a higher subsidy. So this is also quite uh, motivational and good for the, for, the, for the sector as such. And uh, two more issues that are covered in the subsidy scheme, uh, and I would like to point them, point them out is that, uh, uh, there is um, part uh, of the program that focuses on the most uh, vulnerable households. So if the household fulfills certain criteria, the owners can get up to 95% of the eligible costs for the renovation of, of the houses. This is very important because of the issue of energy poverty and we know and can predict that with the energy prices uh, being so high, uh, the number of those households can be even higher uh, soon. Uh, and the other uh, part of the subsidy program and the plan is that they are counting with PR campaign, uh, talking about this opportunity and making sure that the people really know about this opportunity. But also what is important is that the, the agency also set up a cooperation with the Slovak Chamber of Architects, which is quite innovative and we hope it will work well because in this way they can make sure that, um, that the renovations will not only focus on energy savings, but it will also be in a very good architect uh, quality. So 
This is from my side. Apologies for your, um, this technical. No Thank you very much, Katarina. And so we reached the, the, the final, the last one presentation of Shum Jerjeri. Good practices from Hungarian one-stop shop. Please start your presentation. Okay. We can see it, we can hear you. Okay, that would be my question. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you very much for the feedback. So, uh, then I will start my presentation. Uh, my name is Gergely Schum. Uh, I'm uh, from Energy Group Climate Policy Institute, uh, which is based in Budapest in Hungary. And I'm the project leader of uh, the Renault Hub uh, project, which will be uh, probably or is already the first Hungarian one-stop shop. Uh, so the goal of my presentation is to introduce basically our, our business model and, and our plans uh, regarding the, our one-stop shop. Uh, okay, so briefly about the project. Uh, our project is uh, financed by the, by the European Union's Horizon 2020 uh, program. And uh, in the project, we are five consortium members. Uh, all the five uh, partner organizations are uh, different Hungarian uh, uh, non-profit uh, organizations, NGOs, and uh, different non-profit uh, companies. We all work uh, in the field of energy efficiency, and just uh, from um, on a different. Uh, just we are we are looking at energy efficiency from a different point of view. Uh, we have seven work packages in the in the project, and we received uh, 1.5 1 million uh, euros grant, uh, which uh, will last until uh, November this year. Uh, but we decided to extend the project uh, due to the COVID and other other issues uh, until the next uh, uh, year, uh, April next year. Uh, so basically, this is the project. Uh, this one is in Hungarian, but uh, just very quickly, we have seven work packages as uh, this is um, just as usual in other European Union uh, project, projects. Uh, the main work packages are uh, the uh, work package two, which was basically our first, uh, first year. Uh, it was uh, different research work and uh, uh, we had uh, um uh, different um, uh, surveys and questionnaires uh, regarding the uh, residential uh, people and the work package three uh, which is basically about the one shop model we we developed work package four is uh, about communication and then training uh, this one is a very important work package because uh, uh communication of of this new structure basically is very important because uh not many people in hungary know what is a one-stop shop and what it is good for uh so we have uh, uh put lots of work and lots of money in, into communication and then uh our business uh or, or our Mm, our project uh, contains a uh, testing of the one stop shop model we developed. Uh, basically, now we are in the testing phase because we launched the uh, uh, our project. Uh, we launched our uh, our one stop shop model, and we are now in the testing phase. And after the testing phase, uh, obviously, we mm, we want to. Uh, uh, get feedback and uh, reviews and then build all these uh, experiences back into our uh, model and then in the end uh, hopefully we can uh, we can uh, put on the table a new business model which is already tested and uh, uh, by professionals by the uh, people uh, who want to renovate um, so basically, in the end, uh, hopefully we can we can get this uh, new tested model. 
And we have in World Package 60 financing. Uh, I believe this is the most difficult one uh, from all of the uh, work packages because financing is uh, is very much an external uh, factor and we don't really have uh, many influence on it. Uh, and then we obviously we have the dissemination and and uh, and the communication part. Uh, okay, shortly about the our brand we developed. Uh, as you can see, this is our logo. Uh, this is our design. Uh, basically, the brand we developed uh, is called uh, Renopont uh, Energy Efficiency Energy uh, Renovation Center. Renopont Energy Renovation Center. If I want to translate it into English, uh, this is the thing we we started to promote and uh, we started to uh, communicate towards the people uh, who want to renovate. And uh, this uh, Renopont uh, model or, or brand basically contains uh, uh, two big pillars. Uh, one is the online platform. So th this is basically a website, uh, which you can find uh, under the renopont.hu uh, URL. Uh, we were able to launch this website uh, last year in November. And after that, we started to open uh, the uh, information hotspots, which are basically advisory offices. Uh, in the project, uh, originally, we, the plan was to open two offices, but we already have uh, five offices. And now uh, the sixth one is uh, under uh, the opening under opening we opened three offices in budapest and two uh, in other cities of, of hungary and our goal is to uh, open at least 10 offices uh, by the end of the extended project uh, uh, life cycle uh, yes and uh, about the basically about the customer journey and how we developed our our model uh, first of all our uh, basically our idea was to making the people uh, becoming aware because this one is a very important part of uh, the project because as i mentioned uh, not many people have heard about such thing that uh, then uh, that one stop shop so we uh, so we basically uh, developed a communication campaign uh, which is a uh, uh, first of all, an online communication campaign through social media we have uh, intense uh, facebook uh, instagram youtube campaigns so we make videos we have advertisements we involved the different Hungarian influencers uh, in our campaign. We have PR events. Uh, so our communication campaign is quite intense, uh, I believe. And uh, uh, next to our online communication, we have a countrywide uh, offline roadshow. We partnered up with many municipalities of Hungary uh, because they are very interested in this, uh, in this project. Um, yeah, uh, so our goal is to reach at least uh, 30, 40 different uh, events uh, um, countrywide. Uh, and after this uh, awareness raising campaign, uh, we hope that we can, uh, that people will become interested, informed about this, and they visit the online platform, which is our first, uh, which is the first step of, uh, of our service. Because on this online platform, uh, there will be or there is already available uh, uh, a knowledge base, an online energy saving calculator. There are helpful documents and lots of uh, lots of things uh, which can be helpful for people who want to renovate the, the their building. Uh, after visiting the online platform, we hope that uh, people will becoming active. So there is a possibility through the uh, through our online platform that they can book an appointment into our offices, into our physical offices, and they can uh, come uh, for an 
online advisory uh, or they can come for an advisory which can be either offline or online so we made it possible uh, to people uh, to book an online advisory as well if they are afraid of covid or they just don't want to come into the office or they have any issues with travel or anything else so uh, we made them possible to get advice online or offline at the hotspots uh, yeah, so for running out of time so if you could uh... okay uh, so so far everything is for free and after that uh, we uh, involve different internal and external technical professionals which are already uh, paid uh, services uh, but we hope that we can uh, provide these kind of services uh, very cheap for uh, uh, for the people and it is very important that uh, we develop the installer database uh, these professionals these installers either general contractors or other uh, other uh, contractors uh, they are first of all uh, test by us uh, they uh, uh, so basically we made the due diligence uh, before putting them into our database um, just shortly about the offices um, at the office we uh we try to uh, basically implement a holistic approach because we want it to transform these offices uh, uh basically a, a energy efficiency and energy poverty hub where people can get advisory uh, where they can get education where they can get trainings we partnered up with the local governments uh uh, and uh, we try to partner up with other projects, for example, the Power Pool project, which is also financed by the European Union uh, Horizon 2020. So we try to uh, basically offer a holistic services for, uh, for the people. Uh, we have internal uh, experts, uh, diff, uh, experts from the consortium. We trained different advisors into the offices. And we have also external experts, uh, marketing and communication, legal advisors, and we partnered up with uh, municipalities, with financial institutions, and with different uh, professional associations. Uh, and hope we can, uh, together with uh, these organizations, we can have uh, different training uh, possibilities and, and so on. Uh, just very quickly, what kind of services do we offer? We, uh, we offer, uh, for free, uh, the advisory service. And after that, uh, which is already uh, a charged uh, service, we can uh, provide internal or external energy assessors, uh, uh, we can provide uh, technical inspectors, uh, we can uh, develop the technical plan, we can do an energy renovation concept, uh, and we have also project management services and so on. But we don't do, this is also important, we do not act as a general contractor, so we are not a contracting company, uh, but we can offer uh, and recommend uh, different installers uh, which are already tested and and uh, 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 and, uh, and uh, pre-checked, but we won't guarantee for their work, which is also very important. Uh, and about how do we... Uh, uh, how do we plan our business model on the long term? So we have uh, the partnership model and the entrepreneurship model. The difference between these two models is that in the partnership model, the partner organization is, is mainly a municipality or a different uh, NGO, for example. So they are not professional uh, uh, organizations. Uh, so in this matter, we basically do a partnership uh, and the uh, professionals, the energy consultants, and the other um, uh, technical uh, people are uh, external, and they are uh, basically uh, partnered up with us, and we provide these people uh, externally. And in the inter entrepreneurship model, we make a contract with different uh, for-profit host organizations, which are already uh, uh, in the business uh, of uh, energy efficiency or renovation or, or, uh, or building industry. Uh, 
Uh, we have two offices uh, launched in this model, uh, two of our partners, IMRO and MGTA. Uh, these organizations already are, uh, uh, already have uh, 10 years of track record in, uh, in uh, refurbishment. Uh, and these partner organizations basically have uh, their own professional uh, background. And in this matter, basically, they function. They are functioning as a as a franchise um, office. Uh, and on the long term uh, of operation, our goal is to uh, establish a independent company, which will call the uh, Non Profit Ltd, for example. And this non profit organization. Uh, will be uh, basically uh, responsible for the operation of all the offices and, uh, uh, and our plan is that we can get uh, some uh, fee from the partner organizations and from uh, uh, from the installers in the database so we can uh, basically operate uh, the offices and the online platform uh, about the fast uh, financial sustainability uh, some words. Um, as I mentioned, we want to get uh, membership fee, uh, or we hope to get membership fee uh, from the installers, uh, which uh, organizations will be in our database, and we can revenue from intermediated services, for example, technical inspector and financial uh, services. We want to develop the our franchise network. Uh, and basically get uh, in this entrepreneurship model uh, franchise fee from for brand sharing and we partnered up with different uh, uh, manufacturers and, and distributors and uh, hope we can get sponsorship and grants uh, and these uh, incomes have to cover uh, the cost of the online platform development and maintenance the sales of mem and marketing costs uh, the office uh, and the equipment uh, and basically uh, through our team member uh, staff at the Renault Hub company. Uh, and finally, a, just a scheme for the long-term operation. So as you can see, there is a Renault Hub entity uh, which is in charge of uh, the operating of the online platform. And then we have partner organizations uh, in uh, the partnership or in the entrepreneurship uh, model. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Gary, for your presentation. As we are a bit uh, out of the schedule, we will need to finish our webinar now. With uh, we will skip the um, Q and A session. But if any of the participants would like to ask us questions, please send us to our email addresses. We will try to answer them via email. I would like to thank all the uh, presenters and for all the participants for the attendance here today. And we will share with you all the presentations also um, through email. Uh, Katka, Katarina, you will organize it, yes? And as well as the recording will be shared with you. So that's all from us. Uh, we are very, again, very glad that you were able to join and also for our panelists to present. Thank you very much and hope to see you soon on other events. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Thank bye. you. Have a great day.